The Materials Research Laboratory at MIT is home to the MIT Materials Research Science and Engineering Center, a National Science Foundation supported program that enables interdisciplinary research, education, and outreach efforts. The MRL MRSEC oversees a suite of shared experimental facilities with cutting edge tools that enable materials research and enable us to train the next generation of materials scientists and engineers. These facilities support over a thousand users per year, both internally at MIT and externally across the nation. The properties of a material depend on its structure, and the structure of a material depends on how that material is processed. In order to understand these relations, we require the tools that allow us to see structure at the atomic scale to understand how a material behaves. The X-ray Shared Experimental Facility at MIT allows us to do just that. We can see the structure of a material down to its atomic scale to figure out how that material works and why. Welcome to the MIT Materials Research Laboratory X-ray Facility. I'm Charles Settens and I overlook the X-ray Facility. We have a variety of pieces of equipment in order to perform X-ray diffraction analyses of anything from a powder sample to a thin film to an epitaxial thin film. We are studying functional oxides of perovskite type largely and to some extent also simpler binary oxides. And in these materials the properties can be significantly dependent on the type and concentration of different imperfections that we call point defects. These could be atoms missing from their lattice sites or excess atoms where they normally are not. Each of these different defect types have a different lattice signature that we can detect by characterizing these thin films using X-ray diffraction. A primary use of the Materials Research Laboratory X-ray facility is powder diffraction. To prepare a powder sample, we have to put it into a cavity and make sure that the sample is as flat as possible. Polycrystals are ubiquitous within our world. It turns out we're standing on polycrystalline material. Most minerals are made of polycrystalline material. This lab analyzes polycrystalline materials in order to find out the atomic composition. I also teach practical research skills for X-ray crystallography so that you can learn about the structure of materials at the atomic scale. X-ray diffraction is a very powerful technique to reveal the microstructure of the system. We study the electrical properties of different lithium-based materials. This thin film that has been grown by pulse laser deposition on top of metallic electrode, we investigate a possible memory effect on these thin films. It could be a new class of memristors. They could be used as an advanced computing element or information storage. In the sample holder, which is sealed, we can perform the X-ray measurements without degradation of the film. The X-ray characterization is really very basic to understand the relation between the electrical properties of the systems with the crystalline structure and the microstructure. Whereas most of the equipment in the facility is targeting hard material, small angle X-ray scattering equipment characterizes soft materials. You can learn about the structure of a material, not on the angstrom scale, but on the hundreds of nanometers scale. The beam stop that looks like a clock hand rotates into position in order to block the main X-ray beam and allows us to see the scattering very close to the main beam. Students in Robert McFarland's research group in the Department of Material Science and Engineering use the small angle scattering system in order to take measurements of samples that are nanoparticles that are arranged in a crystalline lattice. So instead of atoms sitting at the positions of a body-centered cubic cell, instead it's nanoparticles that are functionalized with DNA. In the McFarland Group at MIT, we work on self-assembling nanoparticles. We take nanoparticles and we functionalize them with some kind of a chemical component. At the very tip of the chemical component, we have a special molecule that we call a sticky group. When we are doing this, we'll have two different types of nanoparticles, each with a complementary sticky group to one another. Then, when we mix the two particles together, the sticky groups can recognize each other and then they'll self-assemble. I wrote a program that will heat the particles to different temperatures, and I will use the sacs to monitor the crystallinity in situ. 
This will let me make insights into the molecular behavior of the system as it crystallizes. What's special about the sticky groups is we can heat them up above a certain temperature and the bonds that are holding together the two nanoparticles will start to weaken and they'll be able to break and reform. Some groups take measurements at higher temperatures such as room temperature to 1200 degrees Celsius using a high temperature stage. This is important for groups that want to monitor their synthesis process as a function of temperature. A particular crystal structure that is analyzed often using a powdered diffractometer is a perovskite structure. So the system we're working on is perovskite thin film oxides. The reason we choose this system because previous research has shown that under certain conditions, this perovskite thin films could generate stable nanoparticles on the top of the surface, which is very crucial for catalysts and also energy conversion devices. We want to use strain to enhance its capability. Imagine you have a rubber ball, and when you squeeze and stretch it, you are changing its shape. The shape is changing because you have strain in your materials. But for real materials we're working on thin film, when you squeeze and stretch it, you can change its energetics. That's where you can change the property of this material. The most important thing is to measure the atomic distance between every atom. So a very perfect strategy is using X-ray diffractions. The facility here allows us to quantify, characterize the structure of our thin films, as well as identify the defect states, because these different point defects have different signatures in the crystalline lattice that we can detect by measuring their lattice parameters using X-ray diffraction equipment in this laboratory. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to working with you in the Materials Research Laboratory X-ray Facility.